Hey guys, so recently I made my very own 12th Doctor Sonnet screwdriver. Loads of people asked for a tutorial, so here's my step-by-step -step guide on how you can make your own. Before we begin, uh, there's just a few things to bear in mind. I've done everything by eye, so I won't be giving measurements, uh, as it will also depend on the shapes and sizes of the materials you can find. Some of the shapes are quite hard to describe, uh, I've tried to be as descriptive as possible, but if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as best as I can. And also, feel free to deviate and use different materials too. In terms of reference photos, I've been using the pictures uh, from Rubber Toe's Facebook page. They make the prop used on the actual show. Uh, they also made Matt Smith's uh, Sonnet Screwdriver. You can buy these props too. Uh, they're for sale on their Facebook page, so do head over and check it out. They do all kinds of stuff. So let's get on with it. You will need a large and small toiletry bottle, a glue gun and mini glue sticks, blue and black insulation tape, aluminium tape, double-sided tape, the lid from a Glade air freshener, some small and large plumbing olives, and also a small bolty thing, I have no idea what this is called, but they are available in DIY shops. Epoxy resin, make sure you can get the kind that can glue metal. A mini torch, some foam cardboard, a plastic ring binder, a craft knife, safety ruler and cutting mat, large scissors and also some small ones if you have them, a coping saw, and also a bit of toilet tissue, a blue, black and gold sharpie, and a hole punch. Set aside five of the mini glue sticks. Take one of the glue sticks. This will act as the center of the light part of the Sonic. Apply some glue to the central glue stick and attach the new glue stick to it, but a bit further down. Apply some more glue to the other side of the central glue stick and attach another glue stick onto the other side. Do the same twice more on the remaining sides to make a cross shape. You should have something that looks a bit like this with the central glue stick poking out. Take some blue insulation tape and wrap it around the base of the glue sticks in line with the end of the glue stick in the center. Cut a thinner strip of electrical tape and wrap this around the top and middle of the shape. Take the lid from the air freshener. Saw off the top and bottom of the air freshener lid. Remember, if you're a younger viewer, do get an adult to help you with this bit. Trim any excess plastic from the shape. Apply some hot glue to the widest part and fit this over your central glue stick. Saw off the excess glue sticks. This is somewhere around where the central glue stick ends, just above the base of the insulation tape. You might need to cut into it a little. When you've done that, you should get something that looks like this. Slice a strip from the plastic folder. Using a sharpie, mark on the plastic where the top of the air freshener lid starts and where it ends. Cut the piece and use this to cut three more from the plastic. In total, you should have four pieces. Use a craft knife and score along the lines you've marked. Bend the plastic at this line on all four pieces. Take some blue insulation tape and wrap it around each plastic piece. Trim off any excess tape, but leave a little bit at the bendy end as we'll need this later to wrap over the air freshener lid. Add some double-sided tape to the piece and attach it to the glue sticks. Do the same for all four sides. Add some glue gun glue to the top of the air freshener lid and attach the flap of insulation tape to it using something flat or blunt, like a pair of small scissors. Put that to one side and take some blue insulation tape and punch a hole through it. Cut around the hole leaving a few millimetres to create a little ring. Pull this ring over the central glue stick and attach it using some hot glue. Cut some more slices from the blue insulation tape and wrap these around the shape in the same place that you applied the strips earlier, on the top, middle and bottom of the shape. Take a strip of aluminium tape and wrap it around the base of the glue sticks with a little bit of blue insulation tape showing. Trim off any excess material. Wrap a few layers of the blue insulation tape onto that, leaving a tiny bit of the silver tape showing. Cover this with aluminium tape and using a pair of blunt scissors, push down the edges to flatten the tape over the blue tape, revealing a ridge. Wrap a few layers of blue insulation tape onto that, leaving a tiny bit of silver tape showing from before. Again, cover this with aluminium tape and using a pair of blunt scissors, push down the edges to flatten the aluminium tape over the blue tape, revealing a ridge. You should be left with three clear layers of aluminium tape, all about one millimetre or so apart. Take the larger toiletry bottle and saw off the top and bottom. Cut through one side in the centre so you can open it. Roll up the shape so it fits within the largest ring. Add some blue insulation tape to fasten it. Remove the ring and add blue insulation tape to the rest of the shape. Cut a narrow strip of aluminium tape and wrap it around the top of the shape. Reapply the largest gold ring on the top, leaving a little bit of the silver tape showing. Take your glue stick shape and slip it into the shape you just made. Use some double-sided tape to fasten it if necessary. Cut a piece from the plastic folder and trim this into a small circle that's small enough to fit inside the toiletry bottle shape. Take your blue sharpie and colour in the shape. Put the circle flat inside the large toiletry bottle shape. Take your smaller toiletry bottle and cut off the top and bottom. Cut through one side in the centre so you can open it and resize it by adding the small rings either end. 
Wrap some blue insulation tape around it and remove the rings. Coat the entire shape in blue insulation tape. Add some aluminium tape to the top of the shape. Put this to one side and grab the two smaller rings. Cut a strip of black insulation tape and use this to attach the two rings together. Feel free to use an insulation tape on the inside of the two rings to help them stick together. As you can see, the rings are a bit too big for my shape, so I need to pad it out at the top and bottom with some extra layers of insulation tape. You might need to do this too. Slide the gold rings over each end. If necessary, use some double-sided tape to make sure they're firmly on there. The two gold rings attached together should go on the end with the aluminium tape and the single gold ring should go on the other end. Wrap some aluminium tape onto the single ring. Flatten down any bumps with some blunt scissors. Remove any keychains from the torch. Slide the narrow end of the torch into the smaller toiletry bottle shape. If the shape is too big, pad it out by adding some insulation tape to the handle of the torch. Stuff some tissue into the opposite end of the shape and add some glue gun glue to seal it. Take your small bolt and wrap it with aluminium tape, again smoothing down the bumps with the blunt edge of some scissors. Add some aluminium tape onto the hardened glue and trim off any excess material. Make sure the bolts can fit on there comfortably. Using some epoxy resin, attach the bolt to the end of the object and leave it to dry. Push a small glue stick into the bolt and cut off the end, leaving about an inch sticking out. Remove the glue stick, flip it round, and on the untouched end of the glue stick, use a craft knife to trim off the edges at an angle so you end up with something looking like this. Coat it in aluminium tape. Cut a small strip of blue insulation tape and wrap it around the end of the glue stick. With a gold sharpie, draw a small gold ring below the blue tape. Slide the glue stick back into the bolt and smooth down any bumpy aluminium tape. After all that, you should have something like this. Grab the top half of the Sonic from earlier. As you can see, it's a little bit too big for the torch, so we need to pad it out a bit. Wrap some insulation tape around the torch and keep testing it until the torch can fit snugly inside the top half of the Sonic screwdriver and can be twisted on without slipping. We won't be gluing this into place so the screwdriver can be dismantled if you ever need to replace the battery later on. Carve out a narrow semicircle from the foam board. I like to call this the volume button as it reminds me of one. Trim the edges and cover in aluminium tape. Put this to one side and cut out a small rectangle from the aluminium tape. Trim off the edges to round off the points. Attach this rectangle to the top half of the handle. Using some double-sided tape, attach the volume button on top of the rectangle. Cut a strip from your plastic folder. Measure it up against the bottom half of the handle and make markings below the bottom ring, along the top half of the bottom ring, at the base of the top of the aluminium strip, and one more a few millimetres after that. I oh, know, it doesn't really make sense, does it? This bit will all depend on the size of your materials, but it should look something like this. Score along the lines and bend them so the shapes look like this. Repeat this four times. You should now have four of these shapes. Flatten them, coat them in aluminium tape and bend them again. Apply some epoxy resin to the bottom edges of the shapes and attach them to the base of the ring on the bottom half of the handle. When they're dry, apply some epoxy resin to the other side of the sticky outy bit. Flatten them down to attach them to the handle. Feel free to hold them down with some insulation tape while they dry. Remove the tape and you should have something that looks like this. With a gold sharpie, draw some ovals in between the sticky outy bits. With a black sharpie, draw some dots on the top of the sticky outy bits. These are pretend screws. Cut a rectangle sized piece of the plastic folder. Draw a grid shape on it. The middle gap should be roughly the same width as the blue strip on the glue stick bit. Cut these into two smaller pieces. Draw a line towards the bottom of the shapes like so. Score along the lines but don't cut right into them. Only cut right into the two squares at the very bottom either side of the shapes. Remove them so you're left with something like this. It's a bit like a T shape. Bend along the lines to get the edges of the T to face you. These pieces will fit on the edges of the top half of the handle. When you're happy with the shape and size, coat these with aluminium tape. Put those to one side and cut two ovals from the plastic folder. Cover these with aluminium tape. Cut four more ovals, but cut the inner edge and the corner of each before you coat them in aluminium tape. They should end up looking something like this. Cut two of these hook-like shapes in the plastic folder and cover in aluminium tape. Cut four circles using the hole puncher and coat these in aluminium tape. Glue the cut ovals to each side of the full ovals. The cut ovals should both be facing the same way. Attach these standing up inside the bent T-shapes from earlier using some epoxy resin. The cut edges of the oval shape should be facing upwards. They should look like this. Cut the very corners off of the bottom of the hook shape and glue them to the edges of each oval using some epoxy resin. Feel free to use objects to pop it up while it dries. Apply the circle shapes to the bottom of the hook shapes using the epoxy resin. This is what you should end up with. When they're dry, cut a small piece of aluminium tape and attach them to either side of the top half of the handle. Using the epoxy resin, attach the two sticky outy bits to either side of the handle. When that's dry with a black sharpie, draw some fake screws onto the sticky outy bits like so screw all of the pieces together and there we go. 
the 12th Doctor's Sonnet Screwdriver. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any uh, questions or if you don't understand uh, certain parts, uh, if there's any steps that have left you feeling a little bit confused, uh, just leave your questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck! So after several weeks of speaking to the rest of the gang, I've finally decided to be honest with you all.